Okay guys, I'm kind of bored tonight, so I'm just going to continue making this. Moving on to shelf 2 and continuing my Criterion collection. Uh, sorry about the flash, it's just, um, it's nighttime and also I keep it really dark in here because I like a cave. So hopefully I'll get more comfortable with doing this. Um, I'm not very good at speaking off the cuff like this alone. Uh, I feel kind of like an idiot. So I'm going to start with The Freshman. This is a silent movie. And a lot of people really don't like silent movies or they'll ask me how I'm so into silent movies. And the thing I like about silent movies is they had to be very, very visual uh, to tell their stories, you know, so the camera is always moving They're They're like some of the greatest action movies that ever made. In fact, a lot of action films draw from silent movies um, just because they are so visual and so innovative. But um, my guy is uh, Harold Lloyd. He's my favorite of all the silent comedians. He tends to get overshadowed by Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton, and he's not as innovative as those guys, you know, those guys were filmmakers. Um, but Harold Lloyd was a um, really great uh, comedian. I mean, he had just impeccable comedic timing, and uh, particularly his glasses character, which was when he had the, you know, the uh, iconic glasses. Uh, he played these wonderful, lovable underdogs, these everyman characters that I just identify with and find really heartrending, and um, I get really emotional about him. Um, but, you know, romantic comedies kind of get a bad rap because everybody thinks of romantic comedies as these, these pandering things, you know. Um, Rom-com is, a, is when that took, uh, term was coined. That's when these movies started becoming very formulaic but if you go back in time there are these wonderful romantic comedies that are endearing and sweet and heartfelt and um harold lloyd was really the master at doing that like just tugging on your heartstrings you know while you're laughing because they're hilarious but um yeah i very much enjoy them and um if you've never seen a silent comedy or a film with Har a harold lloyd film uh from the 20s uh, this is a really good one to start with. Um, this or maybe The General with Buster Keaton. Um, any of these movies, you can't go wrong. And if they don't turn you on to silent movies, uh, nothing will. Because you don't have a heart. They're really good. <laughs> but moving along. I'm a really big fan of Jacques Demi. And I talk about this movie a lot, but I feel like I'd be kind of... Not myself, if I didn't talk about The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Um, I cannot recommend this movie enough. It is key to kind of knowing me and my sensibilities and how, like, what I like, like look for and I'm drawn to. This is kind of an anti-romance where it's a sweeping romantic film. It's very colorful and it's a musical but more of an opera because every uh, line of dialogue is sung, but it's a sweeping musical, but it's um, very tragic and very real and kind of hits you like a ton of bricks, at least me. It, um, it's a movie that never fails to make me cry. I ball my eyes out uh, at the end of this movie. The soundtrack just, just really gets me, but uh, Catherine Deneuve is wonderful in it as always and it's just um this great romantic but anti-romantic film and i don't want to spoil why but um it just feels like how unfair life uh can be sometimes and i love it but i'm really drawn to um jacques demi's movies in general i only have these two but i also wanted to recommend donkey skin it's on Criterion Streaming. That one I like almost as much as Umbrellas. It's weirder. Um, it's a fairy tale movie. So if you like really dark, weird fairy tales, you'll really like Donkey Skin. So I can't recommend that one enough. I'm going to move around. The one right next to The Innocence that's kind of um, hard to read is uh, Two Monty Hellman 
uh, westerns, Ride the Whirlwind and The Shooting. Both of those are kind of fun. Um, let's, but I'm going to talk about The Soft Skin. This is Francois Truffaut. Uh, this is my favorite Truffaut movie. If I was going to recommend one Truffaut movie that... If you haven't seen a Truffaut movie, if I was going to recommend one, this would be it. He often said that it was his Hitchcock movie. It was kind of his homage to Hitchcock. And that might not become apparent until about the halfway point, but stick with it. This is a emotionally riveting film. It is a gut punch. And I don't want to spoil a lot, and I don't want to get into it. But, um, yeah, it's really great. So if you've never seen a Truffaut movie... Um, I'd recommend all of his movies, but this one in particular is a really good entry point. Um, I like this one a lot. All right, we have Wes Anderson. Lady Snowblood's really cool. Um, okay, I talk about the Before trilogy. Richard Linklater. I'm not a huge Linklater fan, actually. Um, I didn't like Boyhood at all, but these movies are amazing um they kind of grow up alongside you um if you're about my age you probably grew up in the 90s when uh before sunset came out and it's really hard not to fall in love with these two characters and get swept up in their romance and it leaves you feeling that it's just this hopeful like what if and i don't want to spoil it for those who haven't seen it but it leaves you really hopeful or and it's kind of left up to your imagination whether they get together or not. And I'd argue that the sequels are really unnecessary, but they're also fascinating because when you get older, you start to realize that this perfect love that you've built up in your life may not be so perfect. And maybe some things are more romantic when they don't actually happen and you're just left with the idea of it. Um, the sequels explore what would happen if it did continue. <laughs> And it's just, it's devastating um, and very real. So they go from being very fanciful to being very real in like the worst way possible. <laughs> but in a way where you don't hate either character because it's, it's just, it's life. Um, but I don't want to ramble on too much about these. I'm sure everybody has seen these. Um, they're really, really great. And... I'm kind of lovey-dovey, I guess, because all the movies I'm pointing out are, are kind of like that. Um, Mildred Pierce, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this one. Uh, John Crawford, great movie. Being There is the definitive Peter Sellers movie. If you've only seen Peter Sellers in the Pink Panther movies, I really recommend watching this. This is a um, really funny uh, kind of satire on politics and kind of people believing what they want to hear <laughs> um, and making their own conclusions. But um, again, this is another one that I just say go in blind. Um, it's Hal Ashby. He also did Harold and Maud, which is another one that is great. But I like this one a little bit more. I'm not going too deep into these because a lot of these I just I don't want to spoil for you guys. So I um, just kind of want to keep it brief and just say just watch them. Uh, this one I have to point out, The Lure. It's a uh, Polish mermaid musical horror film. It's really strange and unlike anything you'll ever see. So if you like mermaids and you like mermaid horror, and there aren't very many of them. And oh, also if you like weird musicals. Uh, this is a mishmash that is just perfect, and I love it. And now it's, oh, it went in. Come out, David Lynch. There we go. Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. Very um, maligned by people who don't understand it. And I hate saying that, but I think people watching it were just expecting the show. And it's not, but it's really good. Uh, right by Night of the Living Dead is an actor's revenge, and by that is The Age of Innocence. The glare, you can't really see it. And then there's Women in Love and The Color of Pomegranates. Uh, J. 
John Waters' Female Trouble. This is probably John Waters' best movie, at least in my opinion. Um, Divine is hilarious as Don Davenport, particularly in the early scenes where she's um, a teenage girl. It's just so wonderfully over the top in the way that only Divine did. I Divine makes me laugh harder than most human beings ever have. I I love her. Um, I love Glenn Milstead so much. Just genius, genius performer. Um, one of the greats. But I was really hoping that when uh, they continued with the John Waters movies, they were going to keep this motif. I kind of like the, um, you know, the color with Divine's face, uh, you know, as the character from this movie. But yeah, I just adore adore John Waters. He's a man after my own heart. That sense of humor is just, I'm disgusting sometimes, and so is he, and I love him for it. Uh, next up, we have The Tree of Life, Terrence Malick. Uh, this is probably the most polarizing movie of the last decade. You either really, really love it, or you really, really hate it. And if you don't like impressionistic art films, you are going to hate every minute of this movie. But I lumped this in with, like, Solaris in 2001, A Space Odyssey, where it's just this emotional experience where if you can let it wash over you, it'll affect you deeper than almost anything you've ever seen. Um, really hard to explain, but, yeah, this is a... I don't know, it always feels like the movie that Terrence Malick was working towards his whole career with his themes and stuff uh, about, like, nature and uh, mankind's relationship to nature and our place in the world and everything, but um, it's a hard film to talk about. <laughs> but like I said, um, give it a chance. Don't believe what you've heard of it. Uh, keep an open mind, and you might actually enjoy it. Um, take that out. I can't get it. Oh no, it's shampoo. Princess Bride, everyone's favorite movie. Don't have to talk about that. Okay, I just wanted to end with uh, talking about Jackie Chan a little bit. I am a big fan of Jackie Chan's Hong Kong movies. Um, just going to go out and say it. Jackie Chan is the master of physical comedy of the late 20th century. There is no one on earth like him. Um, I'm sure it's been said many, many times. He drew, he drew uh, inspiration from... Buster Keaton. So if you really like Jackie Chan, go back to the silent movies of Buster Keaton and you'll see so much influence in Jackie's work. But uh, Jackie Chan will make you laugh. Uh, he's funny, and but it's just his editing is just so kinetic and his movies are just constantly moving and constantly creative. And his timing is just like one of the great silent film masters. He is, I cannot say enough good things about Jackie Chan and I'm sure everybody here watching this will say exactly the same thing he is the master and this police story one and two set is just if you like Jackie Chan and you have not seen these movies um, you should definitely definitely get out and rent um, buy, buy it you need to own it uh, anyway I'm going to cut this off and I hope you guys have a safe and good evening <laughs>